Um, I work for the company Otokumpu, which is a stainless steel producer located in Finland, and we have melting capacities in Finland, Sweden, and here in the United States. And we also have cold rolling capacities all over the world. And at one location in Dillenburg in Germany, we particularly produce um, surface finishes, um, which we use for the curtain wall material. So um, all the finishes that I'm going to produce, uh, that I'm going to show to you today, are produced in this lo uh, location in Dillenburg in Germany. So this is the agenda for today. I will briefly talk about reasons for using stainless steel. Um, I will then talk about our current um, cladding material projects, so projects where we um, are the supplier of stainless steel for curtain wall applications. I will then talk about corrosion resistance. Um, I will talk about the issue of glare regulations, of um, glare issues on building, and probably also caused by stainless and what you can do against it. Um, I will present to you new surface finishes with less reflectance, um, so to prevent glare issues, and I will also talk about new, highly non-directional finish to give you more flexibility to place the um, panels on your curtain wall. So what are the reasons for using stainless steel? So there are these rational arguments to use it, which are, well, of course, the high corrosion resistance of the material, and due to the high corrosion resistance, we have the low maintenance, um, the very good formability of stainless, um, the weldability, it has a long durability, a good cleanability, and the aspect of sustainable, sustainability should not be forgotten. And um, our material has more than 85% recycling content, and stainless is 100% recyclable without any loss of quality. So these rational arguments, they represent the functionality and the sustainability. But what is usually much more important for an architect, these are the so-called emotional arguments. And this is especially this noble appearing look of the material. And then the factor of the pureness and the honesty of the material. So stainless usually doesn't need any protection. It doesn't need a coating. So that's why it is considered as a very honest material, because you can immediately see the surface of the material. And then what is also considered as an aesthetical um, advantage is, th is this metallic glossiness, the metallic luster of the material. So you can say that stainless steel perfectly combi combines functionality, sustainability, and aesthetics. So let me now briefly show you the current um, projects, building project where um, Odukumbu supplies the um, stainless steel for the curtain wall. And um, one project down there is Five Broadgate, which is pretty much completed. Um, it consumed 500 tons of stainless um, with linen pattern on it. Um, the David H. Cox Center um, here in New York, um, it, the material is also pretty much produced. Um, then the Ping An International Finance Center, this is um, the largest stainless steel curtain wall ever produced. The material, the last batch is now on the ship to Shenzhen. And um, so, yeah, this building consumes 1,700 tons of stainless um, and it's going to be cladded at the end of this year. So um, Com Comcast Innovation Center and Technology Center in Philadelphia, um, this is also produced. The Three World Trade Center, um, the phase two was produced, or was, was approved two weeks ago, um, and phase three, so that's the upper part, um, is going to be produced in January, February. Um, Fifth and Columbia is produced. Um, this, the Cerner Continuous Campus, um, this is in addition to the, to the complex, um, is also right now in the production. Central Park Tower is going to be produced in January, February. Um, 400 SCD is an um, office building in Irvine, which is um, was also going to be produced in January, February, and same applies to the accent panels on Hudson Yard Tower A. So now let me talk about corrosion resistance, and um, yeah, it looks a bit like, little complicated, the figure here, but I hope I can explain everything to you. 
So this figure shows um, the corrosion resistance in terms of the PRE value. This is the pitting resistant equivalent, and this gives you a very rough estimation of the, co of the corrosion resistance of a material. And it is a calculated uh, value which, um, which you can calculate by applying this formula um, at the um, left-hand side. Um, so you, you take the chromium content and add the 3.3 times the molybdenum content plus 16 times the nitrogen content. And then you end up with a value, the so-called PRE value. And if you see the lowest PRE value in this diagram that has the 316L, um, 316L has a PRE value of roughly 24, but it is very sufficient from the corrosion resistant in pretty much every areas, like in Europe, Asia, or also in America. If one is really concerned about corrosion, because maybe the material will be located in shadowed areas where there's no rain, um, one could think about using higher alloy grades, like for example, the, the in, in European standard, the 1.4435, which is actually an, actually an ASDM standard, also a 316L which has a higher molybdenum content, which, gives, which increases immediately the PRE value to above 25, or one could use the 4439, um, a 317 LMN, with even more chromium and molybdenum content. Um, so, but anyway, these, these would be the options for the European, Asian, or American market. If you want to use stainless in the coastal area around the Persian Gulf or the Red Sea, so that would be cities like um, in Jeddah, for example, or in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi, um, then the, th the 316L is no longer sufficient. So then one would need to have like grades like, for example, the duplex 2205, or one could alternatively use the um, 904L. Um, so the, if you compare those, this duplex with the um, 904L, you will see that the 904L has 24% nickel. And nickel is actually that, the, the alloying element that makes stainless steel expensive. So that's why the, both grades have a similar corrosion resistance. Um, and that's why from the price perspective, maybe the duplex would be more favorable. And um, the problem with all these higher alloyed grades is, the higher alloyed the grade is, the more complicated it is to make this very homo homogeneous, um, and that's of course very important for an architectural application. So within the last year, we've done our best to get the duplex 2205 um, as homogeneous as possible, and on top we wanted to put the, this very popular linen pattern on top of this material. Um, and so to make it like match with all these other buildings, um, for example, here in New York, the, the, Goldman, the, the um, Goldman Sachs New World Headquarters, which has the linen finish um, on it. So we wanted to match it. And um, yeah, we were quite successful in the end. So um, we can now offer this duplex also with a linen finish on it and very homogeneous. Um, so if you see here the reflectance value, so the so-called gloss value at 60 degree, you can see that we are from the gloss value almost equal to the, to the 316L. Um, so a little less, but that's actually not a disadvantage because sometimes also a little lower reflectance is, is um, sometimes favored. Good, so let's um, talk about glare regulations. And in the media, um, there, was, there used to be a lot of concern about glaring building fronts. So there was especially this walkie-talkie building in London, which was supposed to have um, melted parts of a Jaguar sports car um, or like um, sparked a fire at a local barber shop. Um, then there was um, in the media um, articles about the Vidara Hotel in Las Vegas. So that um, in the pool area, the pool area was heating up um, that no people or the people had problems lying at the pool area because of this um, strong heat that the radiation from the building was um, yeah, was put on the, on, on the persons lying there. And then there was uh, concern about the um, Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles 
Um, but if you look very closely onto the buildings, you see they all have like crescent shaped facades. So it was not, not really the material that caused this problem. It was more like the shape of the buildings. And so the radiation of the sun was kind of focused um, to a focal point, for example, at the sidewalk. Um, so that, yeah, that caused actually the, this glare and, and, and these problems. But anyway, I mean, due to those um, concern, there were cities like Singapore or Sydney, which then started to regulate the um, reflectance of facades. And they came up with the term daylight reflectance. So that is the, the sum of specular and diffuse reflectance um, in the visible wavelength range. So that means between 380 and 780 nanometers. So if you look at this very small sketch here, you can see um, specular reflectance, that is the reflectance, the direct reflectance from the material which um, follows this physical rule, angle of incident light equals the angle of the reflectant light. If you now use uh, uh, the term diffuse reflectance, describes the um, reflectance that, is, that goes into the 180 degree space around um, the material. So, um, the actual regulation in Singapore said that um, any material is forbidden on the curtain wall which uh, daylight reflectance that exceeds 20%. So let's now see what does it mean for stainless and also for aluminum. So if you look at this graph, this red line here, that is the so-called daylight reflectance um, that Singapore, um, yeah, that Singapore started. And um, now if you look at the, um, the stainless steel surface finishes, so there's like a very glossy finish, that is the 2R square. Then um, we have also a very dull finish, that is the Deco Supermat. And you see all of them have a, um, a daylight reflectance, which equals the total reflectance of around 60%. The only thing that changes is how much is specular and how much is diffuse reflectance. Of course, a very glossy finish has a high amount of specular reflectance, and um, a very dull finish has a high amount of diffuse reflectance. So actually, no stainless could fulfill this requirement in Singapore. Um, now, if you look at, the, at aluminum, for example, if you take mirror-polished aluminum, it is even higher from the total reflectance at, at more than um, 80 percent, and even also anodized aluminum, it has now, again, more diffuse reflections, but anyway, it's also at around 60%. If you take black anodized aluminum, so that would actually work in Singapore. So because it's black, it absorbs the light, so the, there's no reflectance, that's why it can fulfill this regulation. But once you change the color and, for example, take white powder-coated material, you are, again, um, way Below, way above the 20% regulation. So um, in the end, uh, what does it mean for a curtain wall material? So you cannot use, in principle, any material unless it is very dark. So that would have meant for Singapore, in 20 years, Singapore would look very gloomy and dark. So, and on the other hand, it's also very bad for the energy consumption of a building because if all the buildings are now black, they would heat up. You need a lot of air conditioning energy. So in the end, Singapore has seen that this regulation pretty much doesn't make any sense, and they change it again. So now the new recommendation is that they don't regulate any daylight reflectance anymore. So not the total reflectance is regulated, but just the so-called specular reflectance. And this is not supposed to exceed 10%. So let's go once again and see what does it mean for stainless. So um, here, is again the a very glossy finish, so that could never be used there. This is again the dullest finish, could potentially be used, but the very popular linen finish, which is like also here very often used in, in, in New York, cannot be used in Singapore. So, um, of course, we also are a little bit concerned that maybe this regulation, that other cities would, would uh, copy these kinds of regulations, so we want to be prepared <laughs> and started to develop um, new surface finishes with less reflectance in order to fulfill these requirements. And because the linen finish is so popular on curtain walls, 
we wanted to produce um, linen finishes with less reflectance. Um, and these are the products that we have developed. This is the product called Linen Deco Linen Star, um, Deco Linen Mud, and Deco Linen Super Mud. Um, the real challenge is with these finishes that um, once you produce, once the finish gets duller and duller, um, it loses the metallic optic and it loses the the liveliness of the of of of, of the um, stainless that you are like used to. Um, so we additionally wanted to make something duller, but still very lively and still sparkling. And that was really the, the challenge in this development. And here you can see when you, when you compare those different sheets with the different kinds of reflectance, you see that the glossy one looks very dark because um, yeah, the specular reflectance is not in the, where the photographer was, photographer was standing. So you pretty much just see the diffuse reflectance and because it has less diffuse reflectance, this one looks dark. And the, um, this would be here the dullest one which looks um, more like more white. So you see that here the deco linen has the, is the, uh, is the standard bright and sparkling finish and the deco linen super mud is then mud but still smoothly sparkling. And um, this is the first, um, the Decolin star I would like to show to you. So we have actually all these finishes that I would uh, talk about at our booth in the Asia Australasian room on display. So if you're interested, you can directly look at the samples and compare them. Um, so what we did actually in order to reduce the reflectance was, um, so on top of this linen finish, um, we added another texture. And in this case, this texture is, is, um, yeah, consists of very, very small like dots. And of course, they um, reduced the specular reflectance in this area, increased the diffuse reflectance. And on top, they kind of sparkle. Because it's like if you walk on a sandy beach, you have um, sand grains lying in the sun, and there's always one little sand grain where the light is directly reflected into your eye, and the same um, applies to this, um, this texture which is put on top. Additionally, because this texture is rolled on, rolled on, when you have an additional rolling process, it means you once again increase the homogeneity of the finish, and so this is like a very homo even more homogeneous finish with this little sparkling on top, um, so we consider this as some, some of the high-end linen version. And um, then there's the deco linen mud. Deco linen mud is, a, um, is embossed on a lower reflecting substrate. And the deco linen super mud um, is embossed on an industrially bead blasted finish. So you can see the bead blasting here. Um, on the substrate and then the linen which is embossed on top. And now if you look at the figures of these finishes, the reflectance figures, now once again the specular reflectance and you can see that, um, oops, sorry, that the um, deco linen super mud now would fulfill the requirements in Singapore and before we just had the standard deco linen and the deco linen super mud and now with these new finishes, we, we perfectly fill this gap um, in between these two finishes. So um, now, for example, an architect, when he d wants to have a specific reflectance for a specific purpose, they can really choose um, and the, the finish that fits to this requirement. And I mean, we don't, ha we don't just have linen as a pattern. So there are like many, many more patterns available. And of course, this star mud or super mud, this is just a production process. So in principle, you can also apply this kind of production to another finish. So like um, the very popular haze finish, for example. So one could produce a haze star, a haze mud, or a haze super mud. Same applies to the laser finish, which was applied at the One World Trade Center. Um, so there could also be now a laser star if you want to have this texture on top of the laser finish. Um, yeah, this is another solution to reduce the glare. Um, so um, once again, this is a super 
um, superimposition of two different finishes. So you use the haze finish or the micro linen finish, and on top you roll this popular 5WL finish. And um, also these samples are on display. And here it is really surprising that um, this finish is relatively low in um, when you when you measure the reflectance value. So this is this you can see it here. Um, so the reflectance really goes goes down when you apply this additional 5WL rolling on it. Um, but they look extremely metallic. Um, so you, you really wouldn't expect that they have in measurement such a low reflectance. Um, okay. Um, so this is a, an overview of a lot of finishes that um, we supply um, regarding the specular reflectance. And you see that there are now a couple of finishes which could also be um, used for like cities like Singapore where they have this very, very strict reflectance regulation. Okay, now the last point are the highly non-directional finishes. So um, usually those pattern materials, the pattern finishes, they have a very high directionality to it. Um, that means for the, for the curtain wall, uh, for the manufacturer, when they place the curtain, this, this element onto the building, they need to really take care that they always follow our production direction. So um, a panel, always needs to be placed in the same direction. And um, so it, it wouldn't, if you place one panel in this way and this other panel upside down, you would see a color difference. So you really need to make sure to follow always the direction and um, to give architects more flexibility um, in with regard to, to placing the panels onto the facade. Um, so actually more like those, the so-called non-directional finishes are needed. And this is a very new finish. This is a rolled-on finish, deco velvet, which, um, yeah, which looks like a bead-blasted finish, but it is actually a rolled-on finish. Um, and it also has a, quite a low um, specular reflections of around 9%. It has um, high non-directionality, and it's smoothly glittering in sunlight or when you apply an LED light on top of it. And these figures actually, they, they show this non-linearity because it, is, um, it measures the gloss deviation. If you take the um, transversal and, the, and you measure the gloss transversal and longitudinal, and so these figures are quite low. I mean, 8.4% is a very low value. Some patterns might have a gloss deviation of more than 100%. So this is another idea of producing a non-directional finish. Um, so super matte, I've said it, it is an industrially bead blasted finish. So it is it's bead blasted or shot blasted on the coil, um, but it is very, very popular for roofing applications in, um, in Austria, Switzerland, and Southern Germany. And, um, but some might consider this finish to be a little bit too dull. And so we try to um, increase the gloss of this finish. You can see that those new finishes here. This is um, Supermat 2400D and 2800D um, are now have a higher gloss. And the other thing is um, sometimes a, a more coarse pattern is required or is in fashion. And so we applied a coarser shot material to um, make a coarser appearance um, on these finishes. And yeah, this is the result. They all, they all have a very low reflectance, so also they would fulfill um, a Singapore requirement. And um, yeah, once again, those finishes are also um, on display at the booth. So let me summarize um, the presentation. Um, so stainless steel is a sustainable, classy, and much value cladding material, especially here in New York, where we have really plenty of stainless on, on buildings. And um, yeah, what I've shown to you today are these um, glare issues which caused cities like Singapore to impose regulations and this caused us to develop new finishes with lower reflectance. Um, then I introduced to you the duplex material which would be a solution for the um, um, yeah, area, the coastal area um, around the Persian Gulf and uh, the Red Sea um, and we were able to emboss this material um, and 
bright anneal it for the first time and give it like a very shiny appearance. Um, and then I introduce to you those um, new highly non-directional surfaces for a higher flexibility um, to be placed on a curtain wall. Yeah, so our continuously growing know-how makes us confident to accomplish further great projects success success successfully in the future. Um, and with this, I'm at the end of the presentation, and I would like to thank you very much for your attention.